President Trump again today defending his racist tweets against those four freshmen congresswomen of color. Uh, joining me now for his reaction is the former White House communications director uh, under President Trump, Anthony Scaramucci. Anthony, it's always good to see you. Uh, today, you called the president's tweets racist and unacceptable. Why do you think he's saying these things? Well, I mean, David Axelrod probably has a better read on that than me. He's a better a political strategist. I mean, he's obviously trying to trigger people and maybe he's trying to engage his base. I mean, maybe, maybe that's going to be a successful strategy for 2020. But I think a more successful strategy would be to focus on the growth in the economy and policies and go after moderates and independents uh, that I think he needs. If you look at the electoral college map, he needs those people to win. So uh, the, the comments are reprehensible. The fact that more people are not speaking out about it, I actually find astonishing. It doesn't mean I don't like the president. I like the president, raised money for him, obviously went to go wor work for him for great sacrifice. When I got fired and obliterated, Jay, I never lost my loyalty to the president right. or his team, and I stayed right out there. So, but when you're talking like that, uh, you know, my grandparents, who may their souls rest in peace, would be wickedly upset at me if I didn't speak out against it. Because when Italian Americans got here, or as Irish Americans and others, this country is a mosaic. Many times uh, in the 1920s, my grandparents were told to go back to the country that they came from. And so he's the leader of the free world. He absolutely knows better than that, and he should have an intervention. There should be a group of people that really like him, uh, that sit around him. Instead of listening to this nonsense, tell him straight up, hey, you can't talk like that because you're going to alienate people that want to vote for you. And so David Axelrod uh, mentioned suburban women. Mm -hmm. He got 52 percent of the white women's vote. Uh, that sort of language is very bullying. And so uh, uh, women around the country of all colors or trying to teach their kids about anti-bullying. You've got the leader of the free world saying bullying-ish, uh, Neanderthal-ish, racist comments. Uh, let's call it for what it is, okay? You can still be friends with a guy, but you can disagree with what he's saying. And for me, you know, at the end of the day, I, I hate this litmus test. Well, you've got to be 100% switched on for Trump or 100% in his camp. Otherwise, you're not in his camp. That's also a bunch of nonsense. And so it reminds me of what Mayor Koch used to say. If you agree with me nine out of 12 times, vote for me. But if you agree with me 12 out of 12 times, you need a psychiatrist. And so <laughs> the point being is that you're, you're never going to agree with everybody all the time. But you're the leader of the free world. You know better. You're tweeting now that they're not racist comments, but, you know, you're snickering to yourself when you're tweeting them in the first place because you know it's going to trigger people on the so, left. And it's frankly going to trigger people that like you, like myself, uh, that want to support you but are not going to stand there after what happened to my grandparents uh, uh, 100 years ago or 90 years ago and put up with that. So, Anthony, let me just ask you, so few Republicans, certainly former administration officials like yourself, uh, so few on Capitol Hill have been willing to say the obvious, which is to tell somebody to go back where they came from, especially people of color in this day and age, uh, is xenophobic in your grandparents' age, racist in this day and age. Why are so many Republicans unwilling to, as you so, say, call, you know, call it like it is? So we both know the answer to that, but let's state it obviously for the viewers. I mean, Washington has an allergy to the truth. Uh, they are in the tank with each other. They need each other. Some of them are afraid they're going to get primaried uh, by people that are more Trumpian than they are. Others are just saying, geez, my salary is dependent on something related to the administration. I got to keep my mouth shut. Uh, but, you know, John Kennedy wrote a book in the 1950s called Profile and Courage. And, and people actually stepped out of the box and stepped out of their political uh, you know, unit, if you will, and broke from the pack and said things that were really honest and were truth to power that helped advance the interest in the country. The president calls himself a stable genius. Start sending out some more stable, geniusified tweets. You know, that tweet is instable, unstable, however you want to reference it. It's racist. It's obnoxious. It's obnoxious to Italian Americans. It's obnoxious to a very large group of people. And you should you should apologize. Of course, he's not going to apologize. And, he, and he's going to double down and say that it wasn't racist. He's going to have a group of people that are in the tank with him that should be telling him the truth, mm -hmm. but are afraid to do so. So, you know, look, I'm back in my own company, got my own business. My life's going great. I wish the president well. I'd like to see him get reelected. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you right now, he continues on that path. He's going to be shocked at the number of people that are going to quietly and overtly break from him. Anthony Scaramucci, thank you so much. Hope you're having a good okay. summer with your wife and family. I, I'm having a great summer. It's nice to see you, Jay. Good to see you, Anthony.